Welcome to Electra Online, and now we're going to do an example of how to calculate the osmotic pressure of a solution that has some sort of solute in it. In this case, let's take seawater or ocean water. What kind of osmotic pressure will ocean water exhibit when we put it on one side of a semi-permeable membrane and have fresh water on the other side, or a very dilute solution like fresh water with just a little bit of stuff in it, like maybe hmm, the water we get from the tap. And so how do we figure that out? How do we calculate that? Well, the equation tells us that the osmotic pressure P is equal to the molarity of the solution times the gas constant R times the temperature, which is that. So let's take ocean water in a desert area, maybe around 20 degrees centigrade. So let's say that the temperature is equal to 20 degrees centigrade, which is about 293 Kelvin. All right, we also know that R is equal to 0 0.0821, that would be liter times atmospheres divided by Kelvin times moles. All right, so all we have to do now is find the molarity of seawater. Now we know that by mass, if you take uh, one liter of seawater, uh, you have about 3.5% of salt in there. So there's mostly salt, mostly sodium chloride, but some other salts in mixed with it. So just for simplicity, let's assume that it's all sodium chloride. And so we have about 3.5% salt <clears throat> per liter of ocean water. That's roughly, it depends what ocean you go to. There's differences in different areas. So 3.5% is a fairly good constant for most of the ocean water. All right, that means that we have about uh, 35 grams per kilogram or 35 grams per liter. Of course, now I can't make an equal sign there, so I'll put the equal sign in quotation marks. It's just roughly, you know, it's not an exact number, but 35 grams per liter is probably a pretty good estimate. So what is, what does that mean as far as molarity is concerned? Well, let's see now, if we take sodium chloride and we dissolve it in water, it will separate into sodium chlorine ions. So one mole of sodium chloride will form two moles of ions in the solution. And it's, matter of fact, the M here stands for the number of ions in the solution. So we basically have to find out how many moles of salt this represents and then multiply it times two to get the total number of ions in solution, which is the molarity that will determine the osmotic pressure. All right, so notice that with sodium chloride, um, we need to find the molar mass of sodium and the molar mass of chloride. Now for sodium, the molar mass is 23 grams per mole. And for chlorine, it is 35.45 grams per mole. All right, so if you add those two together for sodium chloride, <clears throat> for sodium chloride, that means 23, that's uh, 50, that looks like uh, 58.45 grams per mole. So that's the molar mass for sodium chloride. And notice that we have 35 grams of it in a liter of seawater. So then we can figure out from there what the number of moles will be. So the number of moles of sodium chloride uh, will be equal to the mass that we have here. Oh, the mass here is 35 grams divided by the molar mass, which is 58.45 grams per mole. Notice that grams will cancel out and we're left with moles in the numerator. And then I need a calculator to figure out what that is equal to. 35 divided by 58.45 equals, oh, 35 divided by 58.45 equals 0 0.599, 0 0.599 moles. And that would be of sodium chloride in one liter of ocean water. But now we realize that, of course, sodium chloride will separate it to sodium and chlorine ions, so we'll have twice that many moles of ions in the solution. So number of moles of ions is equal to twice that number, so 0 0.599 moles. And let's see what we get, times two equals, that would be 1.9, 1 1.198. Moles of ions in seawater. And that's a rough number. Obviously, I don't even need to use that many significant figures. We could just round it off and say that's 1.2 moles of ions in seawater in one liter seawater. Okay, now that will be the molarity 
of the solute in the in the seawater. Now we can go ahead and figure out the osmotic pressure. So P is equal to the molarity of 1.2 moles times the gas constant 0 0.0821 liter atmospheres divided by Kelvin and moles and then multiply it times the temperature of 293 Kelvin. So 1.2 times 0 0.0821 times 293 equals and the pressure equals 28.9 atmospheres. Notice that the moles cancel out the, uh, let's see here, the Kelvin cancel out the liters. <clears throat> Later that would be moles per liter, so the liters cancel out. There we go. I was looking for how the liters cancel out. We're left in the atmospheres. Okay, so 28.9 atmospheres, which is an enormous osmotic pressure which means if we want to reverse that process, so what happens is we'll put uh, fresh water here, we'll put sea water there, <clears throat> fresh water will be moving across a semi-permeable boundary in greater numbers from left to right than from right to left, and therefore will build up an additional pressure, build up a water column there, and so to stop that process you would have to push with a, with a pressure of 28.9 atmospheres in order to stop the pressure, otherwise that, that uh, movement of fresh water to salt water across the permeable a semi-permeable membrane will just continue until that pressure is reached.